Alright, let's shut the fuck up about RTD2 and whether that will bring in new viewers. And let's talk instead about RTD1 and whether that will bring in new viewers. Now right now you may be thinking to yourself, Ben, have you been sniffing Sonic pens after work? Of course Series 1 holds up. But you were a kid when you fell in love with it and decided to devote the rest of your life to it. And children are stupid. And you're stupid as an adult, so imagine how stupid you were as a kid. No, what we need is an outside perspective. A case study to see whether someone who has never heard of Doctor Who before will be converted into a fan. And I think I've got just the person. I bring you now to subject 007. The first six subjects were unsuccessful. Can you tell us your name, please? Help me. <laughs> Let's just go with anonymous. So Zim, Azima, Sifal, you have started watching Doctor Who with me recently. Yeah, never heard of it. You'd never heard of it ever before in your life until me. No, no, my life was perfectly fine. And you gave me emotional trauma. So you deserved better, honestly. <laughs> so, going in completely blind, first episode, what were you thinking as you were watching it? Well, the very first one, it was nice. It gave me, like, context, because you kept mentioning the Doctor. Like, who is this Doctor? What Doctor? Doctor Who? Hey. <laughs> it was nice, and in that one scene, where they were, like, holding hands in the world, turning. Oh, yeah! Because um, I do remember you kind of sniggering a little bit when he held her hand. <laughs> I think that was the funniest one. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't really taking it seriously because I didn't think I'd like it. <laughs> so I found it really funny. <laughs> to be fair, it is at least trying to be funny that first episode quite a bit. Yeah, it's like that one line. What, what, what was it? Like, nice to meet you, run for your life. <laughs> oh, passing my key. They were funny. <laughs> they were funny. <laughs> you can't see him, but uh, Mycroft is here now. Hold on. He's joining us. What statement do you have, Mycroft? Very eloquently put. So, how would you rate that first episode? Like, I don't know, as a first, as an episode, a bit of TV in general, and as the start of a new series. Like, as a first impression as well. Well, I guess they like eased it in like quite nicely because it was like, like other people knew what Doctor Who was before this because of the old series. So it's nice easing in and the whole like. Doctor Who, like you know. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of emphasis on the mystery. Yeah. Would you recommend that as a starting point to to any newcomers to the show? Well, yeah, hundred percent. Like you have to start with Eccleston. Come on. <laughs> you hear that? You have to start with Eccleston. Would you be confident that if you showed that to any of your friends who knew nothing about Doctor Who, <laughs> do you think it would hook them? Yeah, yeah. It like hooks you right in as well. It gets you curious, like. Especially like the, was it the last scene where he was talking about him being alone or something? Mm. It like hooks you in. Mm. Despite all the outrageously silly stuff that goes on in that episode, there's a re reverence for it among like uh, fans of the revival, especially because first one for us, and so it's got a bit of an awe. And Eccleston generally is a bit of a, uh, his doctor like does lend himself to that kind of awe. Some people like that heathen. Vera over at Council of Geeks, she uh, she thinks that um, you should skip that first episode and go straight to End of the World. But you wouldn't have any context. Like, for me, I've never heard of Doctor Who before. Like, never in my life. I'm not sure if she recommends it as the first place ever to start because there's another there are other jumping on points as the series uh, changes and as we get like different people in charge you know maybe she's got a point what do you think of that second episode by the way because i remember you liking a little bit more what she called the the white sheet cassandra. hydrate me cassandra cassandra yeah. i guess it had more like i mean it's outside of earth and it's like Rose's first like adventure, mm. and like you get all the like different aliens and stuff. And like of course Cassandra, she's iconic. I love how all those aliens were only like, they barely got a line each. They were just sort of announced, going, "Here's the wacky thing we came up with this week." 
Uh, this is what the costume department has been busting their balls over all this week. Here they come. They never say much anything else in the episode, and there's like an action figure for each one. <laughs> I had a mox of Balhoon growing up. God, why? Just why? I they think had one line. They had top trumps as well. <laughs> why does Mr. Paku have a hundred more stamina than Mrs. D- That's so specific. So, um, first thoughts on the Doctor himself. I was a bit confused because he just popped out of nowhere. And I didn't think that he was going to be an alien. Was he the best part of that opening episode, do you think? Oh yeah, oh yeah. 100%. Mm. And then his, like, he was flirting with, like, the mom's... <laughs> He's just funny. I loved him. The, that I, I, he, I, I seem to recall the mum flirted at him, and it was, it was not reciprocated. He said no, no. Uh, he knew what he was doing. Play hard to get. <sighs> wow, I'm, I'm cutting that out. <laughs> um, so when did you get attached to Rose? Do you think? Ooh, maybe like halfway through the first series, and then even more so after like the finale series one. Yeah, if they've not got you by then, that's that's probably yeah. it. That probably doesn't bode well. So, um, going a bit as the series as a whole, because like a series one as an introductory point, how how well do you think that does as a as an entry point for newcomers? I guess it's good. It like eases you in and it breaks your heart right at the end, and that explains the regeneration thing as well, like reincarnation thing. Regeneration. You're probably better off sooner learning that sooner rather than later because uh, the show will take everything from you. Stop, it's already taken everything I have. <laughs> what more does it want? She's just finished series two. The feelings are still raw. So the the characters that you were hooked on from series one, they're both gone by this point now. Stop. Hey, I watched I watched this when I was six. You are getting off lightly. Yeah, but I actually understand loss now. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Doctor Who is a show that will teach you about loss. <laughs> no more it's okay it's okay it's okay <gasps> what have you big, done to me big, big big finish will <laughs> turn your sadness into money <laughs> <laughs> hey, i've already bought one box set <laughs> they got you they got your hooks into you quick <laughs> are you excited for the new series with shuti gatwa and russell coming back yeah shuti gatwa he is iconic I love him so much. His style, oof, 100%. Um, so based off Russell's work here, are you very excited for more of him? Yes. I think oh, most of my favorites are by Russell. Yeah, yeah, your two favorites. Some of your least favorites as well, to be fair. Yeah, but... But that is because he's writing most episodes. Mm. Steven, Steven, you've got the Steven series to look up, uh, to, uh, to look forward to. And, uh, you know, An Empty Child and Girl in the Fireplace, that's, uh, that's a good track record. Oh. I'm excited. I'm excited. Mm. 